How's it going everyone and welcome to the Advanced Vape Supply YouTube channel. Here with you today, this is Brent, creator of the Molecule RDA. And I wanted to make this quick video just to update everyone on a new process or a new technique for preparing your coil that will result in less problems and greater temperature control success overall. Uh, there have been some people that thought they were having problems due to uh, oil under the cup or this or that. But uh, in large part, if you're having a problem with your resistance or your temperature control, there's a 99% chance that either one of your screws is loose or your 510 pin is loose. Um, but more than likely above that would be that your coil is not prepared correctly. If the coils aren't firing evenly on an e-sig RDA in like a dual coil build, let's say, and one of the coils is firing hotter, you can stick your jig in that coil and change its elevation, and that will change the way that coil fires. So on a flat coil that's spread just slightly wider with its legs on the center, it's very easy for it to kind of teeter-totter and tilt and shift. So if you hit it with your dab tool and it shifts this way, it's going to change the way your flat coil fires and it's going to change the way the mod uh, reads that coil. And that's actually the problem that a lot of uh, people have run into using these flat coils. And so in this video with this new technique, we're going to address that and make it so that you shouldn't have that problem. And if you do have an issue with it, you'll understand how to quickly correct it uh, using this technique. So uh, one thing I'd like to point out is that if you could, if you notice that one of these one of these legs is just slightly closer to the inside while one is a little closer to the outside. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and install the one that's closer to the inside on the positive post. This is the insulated post. I did not want to go in, so we we'll kind of just feed it in like that. It can be helpful to use your dab tool uh, to push down on it while you tighten that side of the coil. I'm not pushing down very hard and I'm not going to tighten this very tight either. I just want to make a secure connection with the coil. So now we'll hold this side down. Again, we're not going to hold it down very hard. Just want to kind of pin it down. Same with the leg. We're not going to get it super tight. Just want to pin that leg down. And uh, now we have a good flat coil. So it's asking me if it's a new coil. We'll go ahead and say yes. And we'll actually go over to wattage mode. And at about 14 watts, we'll pulse this coil and kind of push down around it gently, just very gently. Now I can see a little bit of color change came up in the middle there. So that means that the coil was starting to get hot. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go back to temperature control now. For this part of the video, I'm going to turn the lighting down. And our resistance reading is probably not correct, so temperature control isn't going to work correctly. We're going to pulse it at 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Our goal is to try to get hot spots to pop up. Now, anywhere that looks like it's glowing, we can poke with the coil. Now you kind of want to, while firing it or pulsing it in temperature control, you kind of want to poke around the coil. And when you do this, you might, you might poke on the far, on the bottom left side and then see a spot on the upper right side start glowing when you do that. And that kind of shows you what I was explaining is that when you push on one side of the coil and change its elevation, it's going to shift everything to the other side. Uh, it's the same as when you pinch a coil and it, it changes the way it fires. So 
we basically want to rock it back and forth and get it, the wraps to shift around so you can see it, it kind of glowed up right there. We can see where it's getting the hottest and that's where we'll poke. Now, no matter where I poke the coil, so I'm still firing it, but now, no matter where I poke the coil while firing it, it stays saying temp protected and it won't glow. So before, as you saw, I haven't changed any settings. It's the same exact settings we were using when I started that was making the coil glow. But now the coil isn't glowing. And if I poke on it, no matter where I poke on it while firing, it won't glow. And I mean, I'm poking on it pretty hard. Not super hard, but hard enough that it's causing the individual wraps to shift. It's causing the coil to actually teeter-totter, kind of. And while doing this, it's, it's staying under temp protection. And this is how you can test it. Because if, if the coil is not dry burned properly or installed properly, or if you have a hot spot, if you fire the coil and then poke it, you'll see the resistance jump crazy and your temperature control will jump crazy also. And so that's actually the problem that 99% that of people that we've talked to have encountered is that their resistance jumps on them. And some people thought that it was due to some oil or this or that, but uh, the, the oil does not cause any of those problems. The oil is dielectric. There, it, no matter the amount of oil you get under here, it won't cause you any problems as long as you've dry burned the coil properly and you have tight connections. And so on that note, now we didn't get these, uh, we didn't get these very tight to begin with, but now that everything's warmed up from our dry firing process, we're going to go ahead and put the screw in there. And oftentimes while it's warm and the coil material is a little softer, you can get about a quarter of a turn to a half a turn extra on those screws without stripping them. So I didn't even come close to stripping those just barely and I got a rock solid connection. When I go to remove this coil eventually, the legs will actually look like they were crimped. You'll be able to see where the screw smashed the coil flat against the base of this uh, device. And so it's critical, it's critical that you have those tight those tight connections and it's even more critical that you prepare your coil properly and the strumming method does work uh, as well as pinching however for the flat coil inside of this confined space this method of poking the hot spot is the most effective method that we have found and this is actually the method that we have been using here for a little over a couple months and uh, yeah, we've had a lot more success doing this technique over any other technique that we have tried with the molecule. And so by, by firing it in temperature control, which you can't see my screen anymore probably, by firing it in temperature control and poking it, I can see that my resistance isn't changing, my temperature isn't jumping around, there's no weird behavior if I poke the coil while in temperature control. So that's how you test it. If you poke the coil in temperature control and your resistance jumps crazy, you know, out of the ordinary, because your resistance should be climbing. But if you poke the coil and it jumps back down all of a sudden, you definitely know that there's something wrong. You still have a hot spot inside the coil or this or that. And you can literally get rid of it by just poking around the coil. Just keep poking it in temperature control while pulsing it and poking side to side and just poking all over the coil and eventually while firing in temperature control no matter where you poke the coil it won't cause the resistance to fluctuate and when that happens that will ensure that you have lasting success with your molecule your coil will will not change resistance down the road uh, you won't have any of those fluctuation problems that some people uh, have had you know and so Basically, I hope this video helps a lot of you guys, and I hope that it helps you guys understand the way that these coils work. You know, if they change elevation or you change the way the coil is sitting in there, it can change the way it fires. So this, this method should alleviate about 99.9% .9 of everyone's problems. Just make sure to tighten those screws down a little bit more once the coil is hot and everything is nice and warm. 
and uh, poke your hot spots. Do not strum your coil. Don't pinch your coil. Uh, definitely do not pinch the coil or, or put the coil in, in any kind of device that will pinch the coil because as you saw here, anytime you touch the coil or pinch the coil, it will manipulate the way that the coil fires and potentially give you problems in temperature control. So this is the best method is rocking the coil back and forth and you can use the open gap side basically where the legs aren't to rock it back and forth on its axis. Thanks for watching everyone and if you have any questions, let me know.